Hello, children of a lesser joint, and welcome to today's discussion. The last time I left off talking about temporal or giant cell arteritis, and today what I want to do is go over the overlap of giant cell arteritis with another condition which coexists simultaneously often uh, called PMR or polymyalgia rheumatica. And the symptoms of polymyalgia rheumatica are a combination of muscle pain and weakness. This occurs in the hips, shoulders, a lot of large muscles, but small muscles too, and, and in the neck. And I made mention of the fact in the last segment that people often have to go ahead and kind of lift themselves out of the chair like this. They push up on the arms of the chair or the couch that they're on in order to get up. And they also have difficulty reaching for objects in cupboards. Other symptoms include low-grade fever, a general feeling of non-well-being, poor appetite, and weight loss. In 5 to 15 percent of patients diagnosed with polymyalgia, they will also have giant cell arteritis. However, when you have a primary diagnosis of giant cell arteritis, 50% of those people will also have the symptoms of polymyalgia rheumatica. I want you to take a step back now, and I want you to think about this. Pain of muscle in multiple sites. Poly, many sites. Myalgia, pain in muscle. And I want you to be able to put things in context so you understand where you are and how we can use this information. Number one, between the two disorders, we are talking about inflammation of the blood vessels, particularly the blood vessel wall in part, called the vasculitis. Number two is we're talking about autoimmune diseases. And number three is I can place them in a larger category, which I'm going to discuss as well the next time when I get to sarcoidosis, as part of a granulomatous disease family. What I didn't make mention of the last time was the fact that in the giant cell arteritis, what can also be at work, particularly as, as the cause behind blindness, is the blood clots that are being formed. And so you can imagine when blood is able to, unable to pass through a blood vessel, it can't get to local tissues. And of course, it can generate blindness. But I also want you to think about this in relation to nerves and muscles, because we are talking about muscle pain here. And I think that it's critical that we are able to think at a higher level. Because the model that we've adopted in dentistry is an overuse model as being responsible for the muscle pain associated with temporomandibular disorders. And we do get muscle fatigue, and we ascribe this to the Holy Trinity, bruxism, clenching, and a bad bite. And I think that we need to reframe this whole thing and say, okay, I recognize that there's muscle pain and I recognize that some of my patients brux and clench. And I see that as a symptom of other diseases. Or medications can do that, particularly the SSRIs or the SNRIs. But I think it's important that we get information that leaves us to other credible choices. And so when you think about the phenomenon that occur within these two diseases, and, and then of course I'm adding in now, which I did make mention of the last time, anemia, low red blood cells, or vitamin B12 deficiency, or iron deficiency, and then increased number of platelets, which in part are responsible for 
forming aggregates that can lead to clot formation, either in disease or in healing, we need to be able to think about deprivation of oxygen and vital nutrients to the tissues they subserve. And so just to keep this very simple, oxygen to muscle, nerves, the small blood vessels which supply not only nerves, but larger and medium-sized blood vessels are all dependent on a circulation system that's working. And muscle has the same requirements. Where do the energy sources come from? And when you start to put the whole picture together, and you think about the issues related to pain, and malnutrition, people who develop anorexia-like behavior as a result of the pain associated with inability to chew and to eat, or people who have it additionally as part of a psychiatric disorder, all now become contributors to issues related to the entire joint as a complex. And I think that's an important take-home message for today's Jaw Talk.